The Octothorpe or hashtags integration into technology began when it appeared as a key on American typewriters and on touchtone phones, where it is often used to select automated customer service options. In 1988, hashtags were used in internet relay chat as a way for users to communicate on separate channels. A social technology expert called Chris Messina created the first Twitter hashtag in August 2007. His idea for the hashtag was to create a way of gathering online discussions and grouping them together if they shared the same theme. This creates an inner circle of people all interested in the same topic. Since then, hashtags have appeared on many other social media sites, including Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and Tumblr. Hashtags allow for the public to see what topics are trending on a daily basis. In this new digital age, we find ourselves surrounded by gender-related and digitally driven revolutions. Social media has become a useful platform that we can use to convey our views and opinions to the masses. It doesn't matter anymore if you are good or bad at speaking to a public audience. You now have a way to relay any information you wish to communicate from the comfort of your own home. Social media sites such as Twitter and Facebook have become a way that we can attempt to eradicate stereotypes or even evolve the current gender normalities expected of both men and women in the public eye. Focusing on women in particular, hashtag feminism is proving to be a powerful method which seeks to expose the world's flawed and very old-fashioned misogynistic view of the female sex with the purpose of changing them. In the 1970s, feminists often said, the personal is political. It meant that the more women could connect with issues in their own life, the more attention they'd pay to politics around them. Hashtag feminism is proving to be the modern day equivalent of the early feminist movements. Social media has provided these women with a safe place which they can use to talk in a free and open manner in which women's suffering and their individual stories are acknowledged and regarded as authentic claims of the wrongdoing and bias these women have experienced in their lives. Ethnographer Tara Conley, the creator of the blog Hashtag Feminism, stated What I think is most unique now is that we are able to attach our own stories to elevate the issues beyond just a video of a man punching a woman. Social media can play an important role in opening up spaces for women, particularly those who have been marginalised. Hashtag feminism is a useful way in which groups of people who have experienced similar experiences can join together, become an organised group and get their stories heard. Women no longer have to seek out a physical protest like they would have had to in the pre-internet era. Through the use of a simple online hashtag, they are now part of the action. These hashtags bring the issues which would normally be confined to small feminist groups and allows for the information to be relayed to the masses in such an easy and simple mainstream way. The voices of women are now forcing institutions to sit up and take notice. I was appointed as Goodwill Ambassador for UN Women six months ago. And the more I've spoken about feminism, the more I have realised that fighting for women's rights has too often become synonymous with man-hating. But my recent research has shown me that feminism has become an unpopular word. Why has the word become such an uncomfortable one? The following campaigns have successfully given women a voice that has been heard all over the world. The sheer mass and volume of supporters has forced attention onto issues that the majority of women deem to be important. These messages have been that strong that support has even been given by celebrities, and celebrities are great at gaining attention, thus giving a campaign even more credibility, which will encourage others to take part. Why I stayed This domestic abuse campaign was created after the NFL came under fire repeatedly for not punishing players accused of domestic abuse, after the release of a video showing Ray Rice punching his fiancée. 
This hashtag was started by Beverly Gooden, who had had enough of listening to people questioning why women would choose to stay in abusive relationships in these modern times. Yes, all women. This was a response to the 2014 misogynistic killings in Isla Vista, California that turned into a three-day global movement. A shooter killed six women and wounded 14 others because he was suffering from his sexual advances being rebuffed. Girls, all I've ever wanted was to love you and to be loved by you. I wanted a girlfriend. But you think I'm unworthy of it. That's a crime that can never be forgiven. I can't have you, girls. I will destroy you. Twitter users Annie Card and Gilded Spine introduced the hashtag in response to news of the killer's reasons for doing this horrific act. This hashtag generated over 1.5 million personal testimonials about women targeted violence, threats, and sexual harassment. Although the killings were the original catalyst for this hashtag, it evolved further and is supportive of gender oppression the normalisation of gender violence and sexual entitlement. It has become a campaign to name and define, to speak and be heard. Because somebody I thought was my friend didn't listen when I said no. Because language like, don't be such a girl, taught me that I was less than a man. Because people base how much they listen to me on how pretty they think I am. Because I shouldn't have to ask my friends to watch my drink when I leave the table. Because. I shouldn't still feel embarrassed to share my story. Because I shouldn't have to fear for my safety for speaking my mind. Because even though I didn't physically fight back, it doesn't make my no a yes. Ask her more. This campaign calls out the questions we wish reporters would ask women on the red carpet. This campaign began when Reese Witherspoon wrote an Instagram post asking interviewers to ask her more during the red carpet season. This post was liked by over 20,000 people. Hashtag ask her more. This is a movement to, you know, say we're more than just our dresses. It's great. The dresses are beautiful. We love the artists that make all these clothes, but it's hard being a woman <laughs> in Hollywood or in any industry. So it's exciting for me to get to talk to other nominees about all the hard work they did. It's wonderful to celebrate fashion, but at the same time, it's wonderful to celebrate the work. So it's not all just about the dress. She suffered from depression. How did you find the balance in this role? I was watching or listening to something where they actually, they compared you and your work to Meryl Streep. What's your reaction to something like that? I'd love to know what you're working on now. What's next? Have you heard from families who are saying, hey, thank you? Any advice for your husband? The Ask Her More um, hashtag is trending, where they're saying, talk to women about more than fashion. Talk to them about their charities, their movies, their work. What do you think of that? I think it's really important. I mean, I've tried to be, you know, an activist. All of us have. It's great to kind of highlight the fact that women are multifaceted, that we can talk about the world as much as we can talk about our gowns. Ask Fic. In 2014, the American music channel VH1 set up a Twitter question and answer session with the singer Robin Fick. This invited his fans and the general public to chat with the singer. His critics decided that this hashtag was the perfect tool to use to publicly shame Fick for his misogynistic lyrics and video of Blurred Lines, as the song had been dubbed a rape anthem. It's no huge surprise that according to data from Twitter, conversation about feminism has increased by 300% on the platform over the past three years. Women's issues are everywhere, relentlessly spread by the women they impact. For the mainstream media, tracking the feminist hashtag of the moment has become a virtual sport. While some state that hashtag feminism is an empty and self-congratulatory display of righteousness, it has actually proven to be a driving force which recasts social dynamics. It is the radical potentialities and limitations of this new temporal regime 
epitomised by the hashtag, that we as feminists must consider when strategising how to actively reshape the cultural consensus on questions of gender, violence and power.